can't believe I'm doing this. neighborhood is linked somehow to the kind Lady Ashbury's blackmail. First, let's find this Petrescu fellow. Good evening, miss. I'm Dr. Reed. I'd like to ask you a few questions. I know what you're thinking. A tall stranger who meets a girl in the street at night. It reeks of the penny dreadfuls. But I mean you no harm, truly. I know you understand what I'm saying. Your silence has nothing to do with you being mute, does it? Melia, I know you work for Dorothy Crane. Please tell me about her secret dispensary. Hmm. A stubborn and mute comrade. Nurse Crane and Darius Petrescu have been clever. You don't seem to need my medical attention for now. Very well. Goodbye then. Excuse me, sir. Are you familiar with this part of town? Name's Clayton Darby, reporter. Sorry, I'm new to Whitechapel. But. Perhaps you could help me, since you're a journalist. My name is Jonathan Reed. Dr. Reed, the famous surgeon. I'll gladly help if I'm able, sir. Why are the newspapers keeping silent about the Spanish influenza? It's as though none of you care. There's a war going on. People shouldn't be demoralized by news of deadly diseases. It's a disgrace. People are left to die alone. No one is properly informed of the risks. These are bad times indeed. So much for the glorious British Empire. 
What is a journalist doing in this borough after sunset? He goes where none of his colleagues would dare to go, to inform the country. So you risk your life to reveal the truth. I saw many reporters do the same during the war. Whitechapel is the crucible of so many untold stories and tragedies. I want people to know them. That's quite honorable of you. But is the public interested? Not at all, sir. And that's why I'm an independent journalist, hoping to sell some stories. Have you any idea of the danger you face in these streets at night? I've had to run and hide more than once from frenzied mobs incensed by the fever. Do you think the flu is really responsible for this, Doctor? I'm convinced there is more at work here than a simple epidemic. Really? To be honest, I could say the same. Some of the sick I saw or heard of. My God, what happened to them? Do you need assistance? That would be nice of you, Doctor. Who knows what I may have caught during my investigation. If you persist in investigating the most pox-ridden boroughs of London, you must accept the risks. Thank you, sir. Do you need assistance? Save your time for the people who need you here, Doctor. Goodbye, Mr. Darby. Farewell. Don't be shy, handsome. What can Christina do for you? I'm not looking for what you're selling. But I'd like to ask you a few questions, if I may. I'm a doctor. Dr. Reed. All right, then. But be quick, though I usually get paid when I open my mouth. Tell me about yourself. Are you joking with me? People don't usually come to see me for conversation. I have no interest in your work. I am, however, curious as to what led you into this career. <laughs> Short story. The war, exile, and England. This country is not especially welcoming. I've been refused many jobs because of where I am from. I had few options left. I always thought I was the master of my own fate. But now I know we don't always have control over our lives. I don't judge you. You know, this money is not only for me. I have good reasons to need this money quickly. But it is not your concern, Doctor. Christina, have you been examined? The epidemic is spreading fast in London and you could be exposed, or expose others. I don't like doctors or hospitals, but I don't like you asking questions. Considering your line of work, I assure you it is only a matter of time before you have health issues. If it is going to happen, it will happen. Right now, I need money. That's what's important. Clayton Darby claims he will expose the crisis in Whitechapel to all of London. Do you believe him? I believe Clayton's courage will erode with time, until he finally leaves Whitechapel to start another fight somewhere else. Are you talking from experience? I've seen your type come here to get a good fuck in a cheap room or a dark alley before going back to their fancy houses in the West End. 
Why this skepticism? How can you speak about starvation if you've never been hungry? Or about poverty? Or anything else you have never suffered from? Do you need any assistance, Miss Popper? It depends on the price of your medicine. I am shocked that you would think I am that sort of man. Forgive my suspicion. I'm so used to liars with good manners. Thank you, sir. Do you know Nurse Dorothy Crane from the Pembroke Hospital? Anything you can tell me about her would be helpful. I don't know her, but I know her name is Dorothea Krasionescu. She came from Romania like me and many others. You seem to respect her. Dorothea helps the sick people of Whitechapel. Everyone should respect that. Goodbye, miss. Take care of yourself as best you can. Forgive my interruption. Do not apologize, my son. Father Tobias Whitaker is always happy to teach mortals about the incoming Armageddon. I am Dr. Jonathan Reed, and I just have a few questions. A scientist? You are much more lost than I thought, my son. Do you know Nurse Dorothy Crane from the Pembroke Hospital? I'd like to know more about her. I don't like the liberal ideas of nurses, but I especially abhor that Nurse Crane you mentioned. Why do you hate Nurse Crane more than other nurses? Before coming to London, she was a member of the communist resistance in her country. That's what happens when you let a woman get involved in politics. What do you mean when you say that I am more lost than you thought? All scientists are entangled in a world of causes and consequences, and most of them can't see the plain truth. Quite a judgmental opinion, if you ask me. But what do I know, blinded by science as I am? But you are seeking answers, aren't you? Answers about the Armageddon about to strike the city. Answers about the hidden truth. Well, I suppose I can spare a few minutes listening to your so-called truth. As a doctor, you must be aware of the decimating epidemic. But let me tell you that this so-called Spanish flu is just the beginning of the end. What do you mean? The beast is finally revealing itself, corrupting the flesh and the heart of men. With my own eyes I have seen them, those minions from the abyss. Really? And what would be your answer to this biblical threat? We must fight the disease before this legion outnumbers us. But not with scalpels and microscopes. No. What is left then? Cleansing fire. Tell me, Tobias. What exactly is your plan concerning the cleansing of this city? God will recognize his own. More than once this city has risen from the ashes, hardened and purified by the flames. Science and progress are our only hope against the monstrosity hidden behind this epidemic. See, Doctor? Now you acknowledge the presence of evil within the city's walls. Now you start to admit the truth. Have you any friends? Any family left in these terrible times? 
No. But I have a disciple I see as my son. He is so devoted. I send him to preach the good word in the heart of this corrupted city. You sent him on some preaching crusade during the epidemic. As a true believer, Samuel will fear no evil while he walks through the valley of the shadow of death. Where did you send him? I sent Samuel to the Stonebridge Cemetery, where the pestilence and evil grows night after night. Do you know Nurse Dot? I don't like... So you're not exactly a fan of Florence Nightingale's work. But nurses are essential for modern healthcare. Nuns should be the only women allowed to take care of male patients. It's obvious only they have the necessary moral fiber. I have heard enough for tonight. Goodbye. Good evening, Mr. Whittaker. It's Father Whittaker, my son. So, are you still lost in your rational delusions? Don't you fear getting sick yourself? I've been touched by God's grace. I am perfectly healthy. Welcome, sir. Please, take a browse of my wares. I am Dr. Reed. I would like to ask you a few questions, if you don't mind. Doctor? Interesting. I'm Barrett Lewis. Usually I don't have time to waste with talk, but at this hour of the night I can hardly refuse. Have you heard of a nurse called Dorothy Crane? Nurse Crane? So the bitch really is a nurse, then? Always thought she was just some crafty foreigner, that one. Yes, she's a nurse, and quite a good one. What did she do to gain such notoriety? Dorothy Crane ain't even a real name. Something like Dorothea Craniu, something like that. Came to England fleeing the war, I was told. That doesn't explain why she irritates you so much. Your precious nurse crane gives away medical supplies and prescriptions for free. I offered to sell it for a fair cut, but no. Miss Crane wanted to play the quiet saint. As a merchant, you see Whitechapel every day. Have you noticed anything out of the ordinary recently? Well, you mean besides the epidemic, the war, and all the usual crap? As long as I can remember, this part of town has been a bottomless pit, and no sign of the bottom yet. Violence is increasing in the borough. Yeah. A few nights ago, some blokes jumped me, came out of one of the condemned workshops. Fever, madness, something like that. Where did this happen? Why did you go there? In the closed workshops nearby. I worked there as an apprentice in better days. Now I only go to find trinkets or tools. Too bad I was mugged, though. There was good money in that little box of loot I lost. How is business around here? Business? I have no business. Between this racket, theft, and customers getting scared, I'm losing money every day. I see. Sounds like you blame someone in particular for your situation. It's no secret Joe Peterson spends his time harassing merchants. But with me, he's trying to put me out of business once and for all. Never have taken up my father's business.
Good evening, sir. Do you remember me? If you're here for a reward, you'll be sorely disappointed. But I'll gladly shake the hand of a fellow countryman. I'm not here for a bounty. I'm a doctor. Dr. Reed from the Pembroke. A doctor? In Whitechapel? What an opportunity! My name's Bates. Cadogan Bates. Do you require assistance, Mr. Bates? Not me, but your skills could help a lot of people round here. That would help my business, because I say, a live tenant's a paying tenant. You seem to have recovered well since your attack. Do you ever think about what happened to you? Not much. It was a fucking nightmare. Savages. Absolute bloody savages. Their appearance. Jesus. It made me want to puke. You'd better not come back here. I won't be around next time to save you. It's unusual to see someone so happy around here, especially considering the current situation. <laughs> Why should I be sad now? There've always been wars, disease, tragedy. There always will be. That's an unusual way of seeing things in these trying times. I don't see why I should shed a tear for another man's woes. I'm healthy, and I intend to stay so. Since I took an oath to help people, can I be of assistance? Well, seen better days, that's for sure. But it was bound to happen with all these refugees about. Infecting you is probably the last thing on these people's minds. Take this in any case. What? You give me this for free? Don't have a clue about this place, do you? I'm looking for Dorothy Crane. She's a nurse. What can you tell me about her? Dorothy Crane. Bless her soul. I really should thank her someday. Has she treated you? No. When I need a checkup, I'd go to a bloody doctor, not some back alley clinic full of sick foreigners. What help could I possibly be to your business? That's simple. I already get good money from all those fleeing the war. Can you imagine what they'd be willing to pay if I could offer medical assistance to? Mr. Bates, do not make me regret saving your life in this quarantine zone. I understand, Dr. Reed, you're from a good family. Don't want to get your hands dirty. That's fine. I'll be happy to act as your middleman. I've no interest in money. Perhaps one night I will visit you and take what I require. If that should happen, there will be no need for a middleman. So it's a no then. That's too bad. The reed tonic could have really helped people, you know, save lives. Isn't that what you do? I mean, people buy that swamberer's shit. Goodbye, Mr. Bates. What? What do you want? Leave me alone. Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Reed. I'm looking for Nurse Dorothy Crane. There is no Dorothy Crane here. Now, goodbye. I'm afraid this medical leaflet says the opposite, sir. Really? Well, I'm afraid I'm going to close this door right now. Go bother someone else, Mr. Doctor. To enter that house, I must discover who this man really is. Maybe I could start by observing what he's up to. Strange man was at the door with the pass for our medical facility. I refused him entry. Dorothy Crane, 
Darius, how could you know he didn't need our help? His clothes were too finely tailored to be for Whitechapel. Perhaps just the friend of that stray poet who is always about. Richard Nidercott? No, not of the same cloth, this man. I suspect some machination from that journalist. Clayton Darby? Is he still asking questions? Yes. I saw him drifting around St. Mary's Church. I swear he is tracking me just downwind. I must talk to that journalist or the poet. They must know about Darius. Nearby the church they just mentioned. Good evening, miss. Good evening, sir. Are you interested in a miraculous cure for this unknown and deadly epidemic? Actually, I am. Then you have come to the right place. The famous Swanborough Cordial is all you need to help keep you in perfect health. Oh, really? Why didn't I hear about it during my studies? I'm Jonathan Reed, by the way. Dr. Jonathan Reed. Ah, my brother has spoken of your research, sir. I'm Loretta Swanborough, and it's always a pleasure to meet a fellow healer. Tell me, who intrigues you most in Whitechapel? The region itself is something to see, but I would say Camellia the Mute Florist who gives away her flowers. Is there anyone I should avoid? Cadogan Bates, without a doubt. The bloody bastard remorselessly exploits poor migrants as soon as they get here. What do you think of the locals? Most of them are afraid or desperate. They all come to me eventually for my remedy. Do you know Nurse Dorothy Crane from the Pembroke Hospital? I'd like to know more about her. I don't like to talk about competition. Competition, you say? Never met her, but it seems she provides some sort of medical care to the poor. The whole thing has to be some sort of scam, if you ask me. Good evening, Doctor. Can I help you? I heard you're investigating an underground medical dispensary in Whitechapel. What do you know about it? Not much, I'm afraid. They are weary of strangers, and I'm not really an acquaintance of theirs. Why do you care? I'm a doctor, Mr. Darby. I care about everything involving public health and this epidemic. Are you sure you're not just concerned about the repercussions that a scandal involving a certain nurse crane from the Pembroke Hospital would bring? Without a doubt, you are a damn fine journalist, Mr. Darby. What do you know of her accomplice, a man named Darius? I don't know much about the man. He's very cautious, never goes out, doesn't seem to have any friends or family. He never goes out? No. A few days ago, he unexpectedly did. I followed him, but it was just a ruse to keep me away from his house. Really? How do you know? He went to the nearest mailbox, but just before posting his letter, he ripped it up and threw it away. He has no relatives at all? No. Except for that strange man, a poet named Richard Nithercott, who sometimes comes by. Darius would never let him in. Where can I find this Mr. Nithercott? He spends most of his time lurking around Whitechapel, talking to himself or declaring verses. These days, you can usually find him behind the church. Christina Popper claims she sells her body because she can't find any other work. Do you believe her? Of course I do. Her story is exactly what I want my readers to understand. We live in an intolerant and divided nation. Do you think things will ever change, Mr. Darby? I believe the situation can only improve. And now that women can vote, I'm convinced things will change.
Goodbye, Mr. Darby. Farewell. The content of Darius' letter to his children could give me more leverage to enter. Good evening, Christina. Change your mind, Mr. Reed? Christina, have you been examined? The epidemic is spreading fast in London, and you could be exposed, or expose others. I don't like doctors or hospitals, but I don't like you asking questions. You can put your own life in danger, that's your decision. But what about your clients? If you're contaminated, you will put them in danger too. And you think that would worry me? <laughs> if you knew the men I deal with, their health would not be what you'd worry about. Some of them. Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Reed. I would like to ask you a few questions. Please be my guest. Although I may not be the best informant regarding this part of town, my words speak about that which the eyes cannot see. Really? Are you an artist of some kind? I'm a poet, sir. Richard Nithercott, at your service. Did you know the Mute Florist is a member of a secret society? No, I didn't. But I thank you for this information, sir. For it only enriches the mystery surrounding the precious Camellia. Are you not curious? Is there not more you wish to know? That girl has not an ounce of malice in her. Whatever she may be hiding, it's certain to be for the benefit of most, if not all. Tell me, Mr. Nethercott, why seek inspiration in Whitechapel? The place is not beautiful per se, but uh, how to explain it? Stirring and challenging. In what way, exactly? The struggle by gaslight, 
the barren smiles and the added hunger under the rain. If you say so. Such vibrant antagonism and vivid paradox, the stripped humanity raged across each street. Vivid, of course, yes. And what about the poignant distress? Oh yes, the poignant distress. You see what I mean, don't you? That's what I want to write about, and that's what Whitechapel is made of. May I ask you a few questions about the district? Extraordinary part of town, is it not? I'll be glad to help you, if I can. I'm looking for Dorothy Crane, a nurse who lives in this vicinity. Dorothy Crane. Oh, I love the name. The Crane of Whitechapel. Sounds very mysterious. But, sorry, no, never heard of her. What can you tell me about an old man called Darius? Darius Petrescu? Yes, I know him. At first, I thought he was only a small publisher. I invited him to publish my work, but his reaction was pretty clear. Not interested in your talent? Darius is an old political activist who takes delight in printing tracts and lampoons. Those communist activities only require mediocre writing skills. what you're doing at this hour of night, sir. Do you live here? Not at all. I'm just enjoying the pleasure of a quiet walk. Though night talks are always preferable, if you ask me. Especially with strangers. But are you not afraid of the epidemic? Oh, why should I? I see some equity in the Spanish flu. Uh, no flesh should be saved, say the scriptures. Good or evil, rich or poor, all are equal in the eyes of the flu. If you say so. But as a physician in a time of epidemic, I must caution you to avoid unnecessary exposure, sir. Thank you, Doctor. But we both know the seeker of truth has to go boldly where the weak dare not. Did you know the... No, I didn't. But I thank... I fear you are a hopeless romantic, Mr. Nethercourt. Guilty as charged, Dr. Reed. Tell me, Mr. The place is not beautiful. Do you not think it a little morbid? On the contrary, sir. Whitechapel is full of life, full of beauty. Just like my dear muse, the wonderful Camellia. What can you tell me about Camellia? Not much. And that's the beauty of it. She can't speak, you know. She's a locked mystery who exhales kindness and sweetness. Perhaps you're just afraid to find out the truth about your muse. One day, perhaps, I'll ask her to come with me. But ah, will she still be my wild flower of Whitechapel? if she moves uptown. And have you ever tried to learn more about her? Where she lives? How she survives? Whom she may know? Maybe I prefer she remains an enigma. Reality can be so dull, don't you think? What are your thoughts on the terrible situation in this city? Terrible, you say? No. Of course, the death of so many innocents is a tragedy. But the scourge has not been all bad for the city. Oh, no, sir. What are you talking about? Do you remember London before the flu? Noisy, cacophonic, quiet, nowhere to be found. And now, listen to this oddly peaceful silence. My mother loved poetry. Perhaps your words would have touched her sensitive nature. I only see a dreadful disease. Most people fail to understand my perspective. I don't blame them. But how could I call myself a poet if I veiled my feelings? 
Are you aware that your life could be in danger in this part of town? But this is where I must be to feel the real beat of the city. I had to come, see it for myself, alone. I understand your need for solitude, but it's not safe around here. I don't care. I don't have many friends, Doctor, and my family despises me. If some misfortune came upon you, who would be here to help you? Well, you for a start, my dear Doctor. I'll leave you alone, sir. Darius is a bit less of a mystery now. It should not be that difficult to incite him to let me in. Hello again, miss. Tell me about Richard Nithercott. I understand he is quite fond of you, Camilla. Very well. Goodbye, then. You look so pale, my lord. Would you like these? Cheap price, good quality. Come on, take a look. Don't be afraid. Mr. Petrescu, just one minute, please. You again. Go away. Sir, wait. Stop this nonsense. I know Nurse Crane is here. Shall we speak man to man, you and I? <laughs> All right. Speak up. Don't you see we're on the same side? We fight to help the poor, sick, and abandoned. I'm nothing like you, Mr. Doctor. Yes, you are. You too believe in providing medical care without charge. You know what we have to sacrifice to make the world a better place. I have to admit your words have conviction. All right, I'll let you see Dorothea. Don't make me regret this, though. If you want to talk to Dorothea, you must go across the courtyard and take the stairs. We've not been formally introduced. May I ask your name and occupation, sir? I am Darius Petrescu. I'm here to keep snitches and spies away from Dorothea. And I also run this little print shop. I know you fought for your country when it was occupied, Darius. Tell me more about it. I know my days are numbered, and I know I won't see my homeland again. But I fought for Romania all my life, and I will until my last breath. But Romania escaped the grasp of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. It's a free country again. But it's not the country I fought for. My homeland is not appeased, Doctor. And I still see a dark future ahead for my people. How did you meet Nurse Crane, Darius? Why does she trust you? I'm her oldest friend in England. Dorothea and I shared many ideas about this country and about the country we left. You mean occupied Romania, don't you? Even if not directly, I fought against your enemies. Really? Then perhaps you have more in common with Dorothea than meets the eye, Dr. Reed. Do you have any family left, Mr. Petrescu? 
children or grandchildren? Who knows? I have abandoned my people for so long, they might as well be dead. As dead as I am for them, I suppose. This war won't last forever. Did you ever think of returning to your country now it's free? No. I have taught strength and determination to my sons and daughters. I'm an old, dying man who only has memories of better times to cherish. Do you need some help, Mr. Petrescu? I am very tired, but that is all. I don't need you, Doctor. Well, I think you do. Take this, and you'll feel better. Free drugs from an English doctor? <laughs> it must be my lucky day. Tell me everything you know about Camellia, the mute florist. I do not believe in the afterlife, Doctor, but I'm almost convinced Camellia is an angel. She volunteered to give out our medical leaflets. Who is she, really? Do you know where she's from? She's not from around here, that's all we know. Camellia is not even her name. It's her favorite flower. You say she has no close family. Well, there's that awful poet who constantly follows her around like a lost puppy. A good man, for sure, but a very poor writer. Are you not worried for her safety? She is as brave as she is tough, and clever, too. If only I had met her when I was younger. Are you in love with Camellia, Mr. Petrescu? Don't be stupid. If I had met her when I was younger, we could have won our revolution. So Dorothy's real name is not Crane? Like myself and many people in this area. Dorothea is from occupied Romania. That's all you need to know. She seems important to the community. More than you can imagine. The West End does not want to hear of Whitechapel's misery. Dorothea is one of the few doing something about it. Goodbye, Mr. Petrescu.